Welcome back to another Basement Boy Reviews. Thor, Brian, here to review um, my Big Fat Greek Wedding 2. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Um, that was right across the uh, the thing from I know, it just came out this week. Why do you think I used that one as the... Come on, I'm smart-ish. I didn't say you weren't. I'm, I'm just, I'm I'm just semi making a comment that it was so, literally right across from me. Obviously, we are reviewing... Um, Batman vs. Superman. Our posters that have been in the back for a very long time are finally relevant. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wearing a Batman mask. If you didn't notice, I'll point that out for you. And I have a Batman shirt on. Because, yes, I am that guy. Um, so, I've seen Batman vs. Superman twice now. Brian, you've seen it once. once. Did you stay awake through the whole thing? Yes. I did not the first time, which required the second viewing. <laughs> which... The last Batman movie, uh, Dark Knight Rises, Rises, I fell asleep in that. Did but you? I think I had done an all-nighter the night before. I don't remember. Okay. So we both seen it the whole way through, awake once each. Yes. And me, like, I've seen it like one and, let's say, two-thirds. That last hour, though, whew, it was like one-something in the morning. I was tired. <laughs> I was tired. And we all know my history of falling asleep in warm, dark places. So no need to recap that. Um, well, so uh, this movie is getting beat the fuck up. Real bad. Like the reviews have not been positive. Um, before we even get into how we feel about the movie, uh, it is taking a beating this weekend. Like really bad. And I do not understand why. Because I thoroughly enjoyed that movie. Uh, a lot more than I actually thought I would. I had anyone knows I had reservations mm -hmm. going into this movie much more like much more so than dare uh, daredevil Deadpool much more so than anything coming out right now you mm -hmm. know this was the one I was I was excited yet hesitant yeah. because Jesse Eisenberg <laughs> which we'll get into um, just everything everything about it you know what I mean and then I started hearing the early reviews and I was like oh no 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 this this is going this is going green lanterns like this oh is yeah going green lantern status although i think everybody's reviews were like sixes they were like middle of the road no one liked it but no one hated it really because at one point it had like a 30 percent on rotten tomatoes really Ooh. that's that is not good yeah that that is rough. not good but the critic the critic was 30 and the audience was like 80 at one point so i was like okay there is a huge disconnect between the people seeing this movie and the people reviewing this movie. And there's some people I trust a lot who are better reviewers than either me or Brian, and I'm not ashamed to say that, that gave this movie very low, very low scores. Very low scores. But we are not them. They are not us. We are Basement Boy Banner, so we have our own fucking opinions. And my opinion on the movie... It's like every movie is not perfect, but it's a very, very good movie. This is a, a strong sequel to Man of Steel. This sets up what they're going to do going forward, I think, perfectly. But wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't it make sense, though, that this is how that's the kind of reaction we get? As a strong sequel to Man of Steel, because Man of Steel kind of got the same sort that, of it reaction. Was very, it was very, kind of, yeah, you know, not a lot of people loved it. Some people loved it, was, it some people hated well, it. Well, it was very mixed. Like, you'd ask one guy, and they'd be like, I hate that movie so much. And then you'd ask another guy, and they're like, it was the best movie I've ever seen. See, I actually probably like Batman vs. Superman more than I like Man of Steel. There's there's a lot about it, yeah. So, Brian, what do you, what your quick thoughts just overall on the movie? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Love I, it? I liked it. I can see where it would get maybe like only like a six or seven out of ten from people just because huh? I, I see its flaws as a movie, but as like an entertaining experience, I think it earns more points. So let's go. Let's go to uh, you know what? Let's start with the bad and then go to the good. We normally start with the good and go to the bad. Let's 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 flip the script as the kids say. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with some of the bad. You go. You said it's not a, it, as a movie. How, and elaborate on that for me. Plot wise, it's pretty, it's, I mean, it's simple as far as what's going on and they, it's easy to take simple concepts like that and make them fun and interesting, but instead they just kind of, it was like they were lazy, go, like going the ropes. Like when uh -huh. he gets those, those letters, is this spoilers? 
Yeah, oh yeah, this is oh yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't even get into that in the beginning. This is definitely spoilers. Uh, I'll put it in the description and shit so they'll they'll know when they click on it. But yeah, spoilers, people, spoilers. We will be talking about everything about the movie that we liked and like all that sort of stuff. So yeah, spoilers. Do 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 spoilers. But yeah, so when he gets the letters and they're like, You killed your family and stuff, I was like, Okay, that's all right. It's kind of reminiscent of like Batman stuff. But it, it feels only like the taste, you know what I mean? Well, it's was, like it, the it difference was, between bacon strips and bacon flavored strips, you know what I mean? Kind of, but it was it was weird because we had all assumed that those letters were from the Joker mm-hmm. a lot, and that being that they were from that Wayne employee who wrote on all his like checks, but they and, weren't from the employee. But they weren't from the employee. They're from Luther. See, that's what I kind of uh, like about this. Max is uncomfortable, by the way, people. Um, that's what I kind of liked about it is that. Um, they played it more like, well, they showed him manipulating both sides of the both sides of the situation at the end, like at towards the end of the movie, he was manipulating both Batman and Superman, and know who both of them were too, because mm-hmm. it's sent to Bruce Wayne. You have to know that Bruce Wayne's Batman. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's very. And I didn't really love the Jesse Eisenberg character, like going to things we didn't like. I have yeah. heard people complain about the story and the editing, and I don't really have any of those problems. Me and Toby both walked out of that saying, I, it was a, you know, they went from point A to point B. They told their story. You know, they didn't go. Everyone's talking about all these side plots that like didn't get wrapped up. And I was like, what side plots? You know, like they killed everybody in the the hearings they blew up the hearings like everything kind of did tie up to a certain extent well and it tied up to the point where it needs to in that movie in this like movie, you right. don't need the conclusion to whether superheroes are okay or not this is, in this movie this is long form storytelling mm-hmm. right so um and i think and i also think part of the editing problem that or the part of the editing issue people have that one i just don't understand because i thought it was edited well like not perfectly but well, like I didn't mind the there editing. Was a lot, anyway. There was a lot they were trying to get into that movie. I mean, you were setting up a lot in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, you're setting up the new Batman. You're furthering the Superman. You're introducing Wonder Woman. You're introducing, you know, the rest of the Justice League to a certain extent. Um, Lex Luthor, you know, you got a lot you're setting up. Like, just a lot of stuff. Like, that's a lot of things yeah. you have to, like, push into one movie. And I thought they paced it real well. I mean, you were engaged from when that movie starts. And Batman's running through, or Bruce Wayne's running through Metropolis, driving the Jeep around from the mm-hmm. commercials and stuff like that. You're engaged until the end of that movie when the, the dust starts to rise, right. you know, on the, uh, well, on the coffin. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I was with the movie. I mean, I didn't love the Jesse Eisenberg thing. Everyone knows my biggest concern going into this movie was Jesse Eisenberg. Like, that was the one thing I was more concerned about than anything else going into this movie. It's like and, they told him... The wrong role to play. They did, or he just did it. He just did it his way, and like was like, "Screw it, I'm just gonna do it like this." You know what I mean? But I think they because there was him cool Lex Luthor parts in it. Kind of, kind of. He was more of I don't know. He just wasn't the Lex Luthor that we've known in any iteration. I I think up until this point, at least for me. Like I, Martin said, he thought he was very. He reminded him of the Joker a lot. I was gonna say that at the end when he was like, like. Even Being before crazy that, crazy and stuff like a that. A lot of that cell. movie, like when he was giving his speech or whatever, and he was kind of losing like, it. Yeah, and he, and he lost track of what he was saying. Like that's not the Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor is very eloquent in public, and like he's a madman behind the curtain, but right. like he doesn't show those cracks in front. I don't. I just didn't love it. But here's what I can say: it didn't ruin the movie for me. Like, oh, definitely I didn't not. Hate, I I didn't like him, but I didn't hate him. I didn't hate him as much as the dude from Jurassic World, the guy in the control center that wore that wears like. Remember Jurassic World? Remember I hated mm-hmm. that guy so much. I didn't even hate Jesse Eisenberg that much. I'm not even like that level of hatred with this guy. Yeah. I just didn't care for him. I just didn't care for his portrayal of Lex Luthor, but I'm fine with it. Like it was what it was. Right. Things uh, um, that I also didn't love were Superman was my favorite in this, in this uh, movie. He was pretty, he was pretty styrofoamy. Like I, I didn't love Superman. I liked Wonder Woman a lot. Wonder Woman was probably one of the better parts of this. So, Agreed. Agreed. Uh, Batman obviously stole the show. Bruce Wayne as Batman. Awesome. He was good, but I, I'd say Wonder Woman stole the show for Jeremy, me. For me, Jeremy Irons is Alfred. Yeah, that he's was pretty good. Because he, the, just the sarcasm, the way like they, it, it reminded me so much of the '90s cartoon mm-hmm. Alfred, where he's super quippy with them and like always was like, you know, always pretty much talking trash to Batman because he's the only one who can talk trash to Batman. Um, one thing I didn't like about the movie, we didn't find out whose Robin suit that was. Yeah. Like, they didn't tell us. They didn't be like, 
They didn't even mention it. They didn't even say anything about it. They just panned, panned over it for a little bit. It was just, like, it was just a go. shot. Here's, it was just a shot. Yeah, here's yeah. the shot. So now transitioning into some of the things that we did maybe like a little bit more about the movie. Um, I've, I mean, we already talk, talked about Let's talk about Wonder Woman a little bit more. Um, Diana, Princess of the Amazons, like she, <clears throat> I think like you said, she stole the show. Like mm-hmm. her lines weren't, they didn't, she didn't have a lot. There but she didn't a lot really of dialogue. Need she didn't need a ton, it. Though. She she got her point across. I think without a lot of dialogue, which is impressive within itself. Mm-hmm. Were all her lines like thespian and great acting? No, but it's Batman versus Superman. I'm not watching an Oscar winning movie. I'm watching a comic book movie. You know what I mean? Now, granted, I know what you're saying. Well, just because a comic book movie don't mean they can't act good. No, that's not what I'm saying. I thought she acted fine though. Was she a little wooden at parts? Maybe a little stiff at parts? Yes, but Diana's pretty stiff. Like Diana's yeah, pretty that's stiff kind of character. Maybe that's why I didn't notice it because Diana's character is very. Uh, she doesn't. It's like she doesn't understand our culture. So right. she, you can, you can kind of sense that disconnect in the way she talks. Well, that whole thing where she's like, like a hundred years ago, I stepped away from humanity, mm-hmm. and I was just like, screw you guys, like. Pretty much she was Cartman, like, screw you guys, I'm going home. Mm-hmm. Like, realistically, she was she's Cartman of the DC universe. So, um, I like that. Some of the cameos, the Flash. Flash got two cameos. Flash got two cameos. He did? He got two cameos. I only noticed the one where they had the video with him. Who do you think was in that portal talking to Bruce in the metal suit? I don't know. That was the Flash. You, you think so? That was. That was Ezra Miller. That was Flash coming through like that's got to be almost like a crisis or like a Flashpoint paradox mm-hmm. or something like that where he's using the speed force and going back right. in time. I, definitely. And then he got his video part. It was weird how they just did the three videos back to back. Like they literally did cameo one, two, three, like back to back to back. I didn't mind that. That's how I didn't watch them if you were checking yeah, them if you out. Got the, if you got that file, you'd be like click one. Click you wouldn't two, click, click one, three. go have coffee, take a dump. Right. Come back oh, that would have been interesting if they would have showed Wonder Woman taking a dump and getting some coffee and then watching the See, other See, that's two. how it really happened. That's, She's sitting that's on the, the shitter, that's, that's what's in the, the That's what's in the R-rated director's cut. You think it's more <laughs> blood and violence? No, it's Wonder Woman taking a dump and uh, Skyping on uh, her laptop. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, t- uh, Aquaman. Aquaman was actually probably the weakest cameo. He looked cool. I loved his Cyborgs, cameo. Cyborgs was Cyborgs was my was, favorite. Yeah, Cyborgs was my favorite. And I'll tell you why, because it was more set up for what's coming next. Uh, obviously, the Omega symbol mm-hmm. that we've talked about from the picture from the the dream sequence, right? The parademons for sure. Those are parademons now. Um, but that box that was a mother box. That big box mm-hmm. that was like glowing and yep. stuff. The government number whatever item. That was a mother box. So that directly ties to dark side. And then at the end, when Luther's talking about what's coming, you know, a God is coming. It's dark side. Like it's definitely dark side. And I wonder if he got some of that information from Zod's ship or from like messing around with the Kryptonian. Uh, it's very possible. I'm, I'm curious about that. Well, and it could be a twofold thing. Cause not only did he learn all that Kryptonian stuff, but I mean, if that mother box was on earth, you had to, assume that there's some level of knowledge behind it but okay, maybe oh, yeah. maybe they don't know where it's from but they know some stuff well, that means someone from apocalypse came to earth at some point right or, you so know what i mean so if you fuse whatever knowledge he probably stole from the government which right. i mean if he knows who all of these people are he probably stole something from them like knowledge wise you know he probably has their files or whatever yeah mix that with what the kryptonians have you easily could piece together a puzzle that maybe wasn't whole separately Definitely. Definitely. No, it's, I mean, there's, and obviously it'll all play out in, in Justice League. It's, it's kind of weird that everyone wants Zack Snyder off Justice League when they start shooting in like two weeks. They're not going to replace the director in two weeks, regardless of what critics think of Batman vs. Superman. Mm-hmm. And it made a lot of money. We'll talk about in the show how much money, but it made <laughs> enough money where Warner Brothers ain't kicking Zack Snyder off nothing. You know, and, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. Plus, it's, <clears throat> I think, and let me, let me go off on a little tangent here before we go on some more things. Like, I think part of what people didn't like about this movie is that it's not a Marvel movie. It's not, the colors aren't bright. It's not like super comedy the whole time. It's shot in a much different, darker tone. It's, it's much different than what we're getting from Marvel. Like not Marvel. See, I can, not I, Marvel I, I Netflix. disagree. I can tell you probably exactly. I can probably pinpoint the exact, I mean, when we're talking 
how it's cut, how it's acted, those are superficial. I can tell you right now, the two biggest factors that lead to the reviews on this being negative. What's that? Number one, it's a transition movie. It's just like those people who are mad about how Star Wars, and they're like, it's just like the old ones, what, what, yada, yada, yada. Right. It's the transition. People, people don't really like it, and it's one of those things where, yeah, it's basically, it's like the filler episode in a TV series. Not. Nah. No, really. It's almost like the, the it's almost like um uh, like the first episode. Like if you look at Man of Steel, it's like the pilot. Like that's like the pilot episode. And this is like the first episode of the season. This tells you where the rest of the season's going to go. You know what I mean? It's not really yeah, a filler episode. For me, I I honestly think it is because people have an expectation from comic book movies now. Even Daredevil, even uh the Fox films. This was a very different superhero movie than we've gotten since Watchmen. Like, we haven't gotten a, a superhero movie like this since Watchmen. And Watchmen was kind of mixed like this, too. Because mm -hmm. Zack Snyder's style is, you know... It, everyone always says he's style over substance. Where I don't really believe that. I think his style is his substance. You know what I mean? The style that he, that he works in and the way he tells his stories. Like, he has... <clears throat> I feel a good story, but he uses the style and he uses the visuals as much as he uses the dialogue and all the other stuff to tell his full story. So you got to look at it from all angles, not just like, you know, certain ones that people pick and choose from. But going back to what I uh, about things that we did like about this movie, uh, the fight sequence that the Batman versus Superman, the actual fight part. You, you didn't. Love that was it. my second point. What? Why this movie didn't. Oh, OK. Do, I was OK with it. There were good parts to it. But was it nearly as good as it could have been? And I don't mean like the punching wasn't good enough. I mean when they were talking to each other during the fight, I could it literally was white noise because nothing they said had any real substance to it during the fight. There are they could have worked much harder on the dialogue to make me way more invested in that fight I don't, than they I don't did. Need, I don't need dialogue during that fight. You I just do want to fight. You, you I say want, that, I, but no, I the just best want, fights, I the best fights you've ever seen usually have some sort of gravity to them. And how is the gravity? They had set that up before the fight started. Not really. Because mm, yeah. even in the end, why was Superman fighting Batman? Because he had, Lex To save his mom. So had, there was zero right. gravity there. It was, oh, he has to save his mom. So he doesn't actually want to fight Batman. And there was no, Batman should have like stole the show and been like, you're a son of a bitch. I'm going to kick your ass. Like, he did. He, spray him he, with the, no. He real close. Mm, 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 uh, mm. It was, right. it was, it was here. I was expecting. See, and I here. think, and I think it's more here. I don't think it's way up here or way down there. I think it's more, you know, right there. I think it was better than, better than good, but not great. Well, and it's not like it was bad. It just wasn't when you're expecting something this great i expected it to happen earlier in the film i thought i thought it happened way yeah, later in the of, film there was one part that i really did like in that fight that i didn't draw the connection to right away but when i was talking to martin he made and i was like actually i really like that connection there so when he talks about being a hunter or whatever and the waynes being a hunter because i told martin i was like it's really stupid he made a spear out of the the Kryptonite? yeah i was why? like that's just stupid because batman doesn't use spears why would you why would you pick a weapon you don't use like it, it, you know like I'm, i would have been happy with brass knuckles a batarang something but then he was like but the the hunter thing and i'm like that's actually pretty clever I giving been, him a spear because he's cool, a hunter I you know cool knuckles or a bullet or something too but that's also not batman either the, well but the, the knuckles would be but, but not, the implication you know. with the spear right. it, it's way more symbolic now that when you mention that he's like he's a hunter He's going back to what the Waynes were, you know? He's When he had to weaken him with the gas, the kryptonite mm -hmm. gas first, and then that would weaken him so that they could beat him. And then after he weakened him a couple times, then he was going to kill him with the spear. So I, I liked the fight, though. I thought the fight was... The Doomsday fight... You know what I really liked about that? Hmm. Wonder Woman's music. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL's score of Batman vs. Superman I thought was spot on. Cause every time her, every time she come on screen, you know that like badass music would start playing. That was dope music. Like that, like Wonder Woman got the best music in Batman vs Superman. I think Wonder Woman just kind of shined in this because she was she did she, she was awesome. She kicked ass. Yeah, she and did. And there was never like a, a scene where she needed like it wasn't. She was Wonder Woman. You know what I mean? Right. She was a hero. She wasn't right. like you know like oh she's not as good. Like she was 
could kick Batman's ass. You know, oh, you're easily, watching it and you're like, she you're can... like, Batman's the weakest out of these three, and For she's sure. just whooping ass. It's you never once Although, were like Batman, oh, Wonder Woman's Batman okay. whooping Superman and having him down like that and in that position. Like I think a lot of people, because I talked to a lot of people who aren't as like deep into the nurse. I'm like, how Batman even fight Superman? And for Batman to put him down like that and to like have him in the position where he could have killed him, that says a lot about you know mm-hmm. Batman and stuff like that. So, uh, well, then we got to the end. I didn't love the ending. I think that was one of my weaker parts. I don't think they needed for. Well, I don't. I don't think they needed to fake fake his death. They're not fake his death, but for him to die. You know what I mean? Like Superman dying in the second film made zero sense to me. That's the one thing where I'm like, I didn't agree with that choice. Uh, it didn't make sense to me, but at the same time, because you know he's not dead. See, the problem here is. I'm too optimistic with these movies because just like I was like, just yes, yeah, you know, he's actually probably good. He that we're, oh we're yeah, just he, seeing the it face. wasn't it wasn't Not a double, it wasn't a double turn. He mm-hmm. was just that fucking that was weird him. the whole so time. I was so just that was wrong, disappointing. Just, <laughs> but was. and it, so it's like part of me is like, you know, they're probably setting it up for something cool. You know, there's probably a reason they faked his death. But you know, it's just gonna be <laughs> brushed under the rug. But like part of me is like, I know they're gonna do something Hopefully. cool. Hopefully, <clears throat> but I, I did kind of like how they set it up now that Batman and Wonder Woman are gonna put together the Justice League. Mm-hmm. Because with missing Superman would be a reason why you need to gather these heroes together. That just came to me actually. Um, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Taking Superman out of the equation, even by faking and not faking his death, but having him, by having him die. Right. Air quotes. Um, sets it up to where now Wonder Woman and Batman have to assemble a team and then Superman can re you know introduce himself you know once he heals or right and, and it, then and they'll it realize him, they need him and it too. could take him out of you know maybe the first half of Justice League the movie and make it more of like you know Batman and Wonder or Woman setting honestly up. not even take him out of the Justice League movie but it would make sense why he wouldn't be in any of these other superheroes. You know how everybody always complains? Right. Well, why didn't Thor come in and help? Or- Wonder Woman's going to take place in two separate time, uh, like timelines. Mm-hmm. Suicide Squad, that'll make sense if Suicide... We don't know what, when Suicide Squad takes place. Is it place during Batman right, Superman? Right, but even after if you Batman ignore that, Superman? but like, okay, so if we have like... Well, and then you, the next movie you have is Justice League. So there'd be no reason for him to show up in any of these movies, realistically. I guess. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, depending upon when they set them. But no, I get what you're saying. Because it is. Mm -hmm. With Marvel, you're getting to that point now where it's like, if they have their standalones, like, well, why didn't didn't he just call in? (laughs) Well, and even Ant-Man. Ant-Man made a good joke about it, though. Like, first Mm -hmm. thing, let's call in the Avengers. You know? And Pim's like, yeah, I'm going to give my, you know, Mm -hmm. stuff over to a Stark. I've been keeping it out of their hands for, you know, 80-some years. All right, I don't know how we turn this into a Marvel discussion. Yeah. All right, let's bring it back. Bring it back. DC. DC. Fully DC. I'm wearing a Batman mask. DC as it gets. Um, final score. Um, out of hmm, out of batarangs, five out of five batarangs. What's your score? Out of five batarangs, what's your score? I'm not gonna rate it in batarangs. I'm gonna rate it in symbols that mean hope. Superhero. Okay, Superman symbols. Out I'm of gonna, five Superman symbols. I'm gonna rate it. Four, only because Man of Steel, I was lukewarm. Like, I liked it when I saw it in theater. But every time I've seen it since then, I like that movie more and more. Like, I went from liking that movie to, like, I fucking love Man of Steel. And I was going to get to that point. Seeing it the first time, I was like, that's a good movie. Seeing it the second time, I was like, that's a much better movie than I thought the first time. Like, much better than I thought. Which is weird. I don't know why Man of Steel is set up. Maybe it's just Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder is like, wait, sometimes, like, you have to watch it. Like, I saw Watchmen nine times in the theater. Well, and I don't think it's, like, necessarily, because it's not like Man of Steel, like, pick up things. It's not super complex, no, but it's just, like, it's it's, just, it's different nuances of how the film is made. It's just, like, small intricacies that you start liking about the. I don't know. No, I get get it. They're good repeats. So, uh, I'm going to give it a. I thought I was going to give it something. You know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go four too. I am because it's not. It's not perfect. You know, it's it's not a five out of five. You know, it's. I didn't. We have Deadpool five out of five, didn't we? I don't know. I had more fun at Deadpool. Deadpool I think was I gave a different it movie. Close, but I don't think I. I gave it a max score. Oh, I, don't I think remember. I can't. Oh, that was Hello Kitty backpacks, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. I'm pretty sure I did. I love that. I love that movie. I don't know. I like. I like Batman Superman a lot. Different movies. 
different movies. You can't compare, you know, apples and oranges. But uh, as far as Batman vs Superman goes, we're both go uh, go see it. Don't listen to what people are saying. It's a lot better than what critics say. It's not. It's perfect. Fun. It is. It's a good. If time. you're going to watch the Oscar winner this year, not Batman vs Superman. But if you want to go. Waste the two and a half hours, two hours, 45 minutes, it does, and, it doesn't and have see, fun. It doesn't seem like it's that long. Oh, no, there's it blows no, there's no, no post credit scene, so don't waste your time waiting around for a post credit scene because that's not DC's thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I like the movie a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked it a lot. A lot more than I thought I was going to. I'm going to see it definitely again. I still haven't seen it in 3D IMAX, so there's that. Still. I saw it in 3D the first Did time. You? I, not I, IMAX, I've, seen it, I've seen it in 2D every time because I, I want to like take it the in. The 3D wasn't particularly great. See, I've heard a lot of complaints about the 3D actually. The more of the complaints that I've heard is that the 3D is not good. It's it's and it's not that it's not good as in boring. There was a few scenes where the 3D looks like, literally look, didn't yeah, work. Like yeah. I saw the two images. The conversion wasn't wonderful. So it the three D is effed up on it, I think. Yeah, well, maybe I'll just see it in two D again, but I'll definitely be seeing it again. So, all right, well, let us know what you guys think. Give us your guys' scores. We want to hear your guys' opinions on this movie because I'm sure there's a lot of them out there. Uh, but that's it, Basin Boy reviews. Guess what? Episode fifty coming up next, our one year anniversary. It's gonna be great. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. YouTube, Facebook, we're everywhere. Follow us, like us. Later. <laughs> Deuces.